Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're creating a full stack web application using Python Django as our backend and React.js frontend. This is not the first video in this series, in fact we've done nine before in which we've completed um, the React.js setup, our Python Django setup, um, page navigation and also creating a nice navigation menu. And in the previous videos we've also focused on uh, creating records for our database editing those and displaying them on the home page. In this video, we're going to continue and focus on deleting records from our database from our React.js frontend. And to realize that we're going to be following five main steps, we're going to start by creating a URL and a JavaScript file for deleting records. Next, we're going to change the buttons on our home page so we can direct uh, to the right page for deleting the record and also uh, parameterize it with the ID of the record. We're going to fetch data on that page and make sure that we can get the ID of the URL so we can uh, delete the record that we want to delete. And then we're going to create some logic that enables users to confirm whether they want to delete a record or not. And as the last part, we're also going to test it out and see everything works the way that we expect. So let's get started right away. And the first things that we need to do is we need to create a new URL for our delete page and then also create a, a JV, and then also create a JavaScript file for that delete page. So first thing, we're gonna go to our um, edit page and we're going to copy and paste that one and I'm going to just rename it to delete.js. So now we have a page where we are going to uh, populate everything for deleting the different records. And we're also going to rename the constant on the top to delete. And on the bottom, we're also going to say export default delete so that the name is unique. And let's save that. The next thing we need to do is we need to register a URL endpoint in our app.js file and also make sure that the delete component is added uh, in there as an element. So the first thing on the top is we're going to import delete from components.delete. And then I'm just going to copy one of my routes like so. And I'm just going to state that this is going to be delete. And then we want to have the ID as the parameter, similarly to our last video where we uh, focused on editing records. And the element is not going to be edit, but it is going to be delete. And that should make sure um, yeah, that we are able to go to the right page. Okay, so the first step is complete. I've just started my front end server so we can take a look at our application. You can remember from one of our previous videos that we have included on the homepage this table with the data that we have in our database, including buttons for editing and deleting records. We have already uh, added a link to this edit button. So if we click on it, it will take the ID and then get the relevant information so we can edit the record. What we need to do now is do a very similar thing, but then for delete. And that requires us to make a small change to our home.js file. So back in our code and in the front end uh, components, I'm going to look for our home.js page. And here in the button section, we're going to copy over what we have done for the edit uh, functionality. And we're going to repeat it, but then for delete. So I need to copy this part over where we define that the component is a link and that we specify where the link actually needs to go to. So in this case, um, it needs to go to delete and then it needs to have the parameter of the ID. Because if you recall correctly, if we go to app.js, you can see that I want to go to delete and then I want to receive the ID of the record so we can use that um, in our requests. So on the home page here, we do the same thing where we have delete slash and then we take the row.original ID of the record from our table. And now if we save this, this should work correctly. So let's take a look. So we're back in our code. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a page for uh, deleting these records. And ideally what I want is when the user comes to this page, I want to uh, show them the um, name of the project. So once, let's say, uh, you are here to delete project with them the name and I want to have a button that is going to confirm whether they really want to delete it um, yeah, or enable them to go back to the previous page. So to do that we need to make some changes because this page right now is just a copy of the page 
um, for editing records. So I'm just going to take out everything that I don't think that I need. The first thing we see on the top is that we use the Axios instance to get the uh, project information. And I still want to do that, but I don't want to set values of forms, but I want to just uh, pass the data to, um, yeah, to a variable. So I'm going to delete the whole set value thing right here, but I'm going to keep the Axios instance that gets the project based on the uh, parameter. And if you want more information on that, uh, yeah, just go back to my previous video because there I explained into more detail. But we're going to add some constants here that is going to uh, get the data and then put it into a variable. Uh, and if you want to know what I mean by that, is we're going to be the same what we did on the home.js page where we uh, use set my data, where we take the data and pass that to this variable like so. So I'm just going to copy over this code and I'm going to put it in my delete.js file like so, including also the loading and the set loading. But what I then also need to change is I need to make sure that I get the, uh, this URL instead of the URL of just the generic project. like this and now we can delete this old part because we don't really need it and what is happening right here it is going to use our axios instance and get the information from our backend by uh, trying the url of project including the id of the uh, parameter and we're getting this parameter uh, the same way as what we did with our edit page um, then it is going to uh, set populate this variable with the data and it's going to set loading to false because we know that once the data has been passed, we're no longer loading. The next thing that we can also take out of this page is the uh, default values because we are not going to do anything with forms right here. And I'm just going to also delete this part right here for the use form because that's just useless as well. I am going to keep the constant of submission because after someone clicks the button, something needs to happen. So for now, I'm just going to uh, get this here and delete some of the things that we are not going to need, like this stuff. So for now, once someone clicks the button, we want to go to Axios instance dot not put but dot delete, and then we want to delete the project and get the ID there as well. And then once that has been done, we're going to navigate to our home page again. So uh, yeah, so that we are back to where we started. We can also delete the form tags right in the return statement. And as a matter of fact, I can delete the entire forms that we have because I don't want to display any forms right there. I just want to display some text. And in the title, I'm going to say delete record, uh, delete project. And then in here, I want to pass in the name. And we also have a submit button in the end, which is going to uh, make sure that we submit the actual deletion of the records. Okay, I think that is all that we need. So I'm just going to. Uh, put our submit button on the bottom like so. I can delete this box just to make our code a little bit more readable and a little bit more easy to understand. Like this, like this, because the only information that I want to show is one uh, box, well not even a box, just yeah, just one box stating, um, are you sure that you want to delete project? And then in here we want to have the name of the project and then a submit button that is going to do this submission action um, of deleting the project. And I think we now have everything ready. So the last things that we want to add to this is we actually want to use the data that we pass into my data to get some information on our project on the screen as well. So what I can do on the bottom here is I can say delete project 
and then I want it to display the my data dot name. And I'm going to do the same here. Are you sure that you want to do the project my data dot name? And this should provide us with the name of the project that we want to delete. And then once we submit it, we want to uh, trigger this function called submission. So in our button, I can uh, remove the type submit because we're not submitting anything. But I can add on click and then make sure that that's equal to submission. And by doing this, once we click the button, it will trigger this function. And whilst triggering this function, it will uh, delete the record by <clears throat> calling this API. Okay, so we made quite some changes in here. And the last thing that I want to change is I want to use the loading and the set loading to make sure that we have loaded the data before anything happens. Uh, we've also done that in our previous tutorials, uh, just to make sure that we actually uh, do things in the right sequence. So if you look at my home.js file, you can see that in the return statement, we start by uh, if it is loading, then we want to display it on the page. Well, we are loading something. Otherwise, we want to display the actual uh, information and the code. So I'm going to do the same thing inside of my return statement here, because I want to make sure that we have loaded actual data before I'm going to uh, actually type in all of that stuff. So I'm going to say, if it is loading, then I want to see loading data. And otherwise, I want to return a div with this whole piece of code inside of it. And then we can close this statement. And this should work fine, yeah. And the reason that I'm putting in these this entire code between two div uh, brackets is because your entire code must be in one, uh, yeah one block instead of all of those separate blocks and the last thing that i will do here is i'm going to remove all of the imports that we're actually not using and one of the things that we are using but it is not currently in here is use state so on the top i'm going to say import react use effect but also use state from react and now let's go to our uh, server from react and let's see what is going on so we're back on our home page right now. And now when we click on this delete button, we should go to a page where it uh, shows some information and asks us to delete the records. Okay, so we are now on this page. You can see that it's asking us to delete project with the name of the project. And it also asks us, are you sure that you want to delete the project uh, with the name? Um, and then we can click on submit to actually delete it. I'm going to make a few changes. Uh, the first thing that I want to change is I want on this button uh, to be specific. So I'm going to say delete the project as the text. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is I want to justify content now space around, but I just want to do uh, start. Make sure that's going to be on the left hand side of the screen. Um, let's see if that is the case. Yeah, so now it's all aligned right here. And this looks fine for now because this is all that we want. And then once we click this button, it should be deleted from our database uh, and it should return us to the home page. So let's see what happens when we actually do it. So uh, currently in our API slash project model, you can see that we have two records. It's this one with a very strange name and also project free. And now in our front end, we are on the page for, for the project with the strange name. And let's see what happens when I delete this project. Okay, so I've deleted it. I've come back to my home page. And if I now refresh this right here, you can see that our project is done, is gone from the database. Um, in our front end, it is still visible. But when I go to my back end code, and you can see clearly that it's going that it's deleting this one right here. And when I make a change to one of the backend files, such as let's say settings, and I'm adding a space and I'm saving it, it's going to reload my server. And when I go to the front end and click on enter, you can see that only one project is there.
So now we have successfully deleted records uh, from our database and make sure that the navigation is also working to our homepage. And that is actually all that we're going to do for today. Um, in the next video, I'm going to focus on form validation because we want to uh, also make sure that when we create records, that certain things are, for example, required um, <clears throat> so that we can uh, restrict the user in what they can input. For now, I want to thank you very much for watching this video in this tutorial series. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.